Hey everyone, it's Kong again with another super condensed cycle ending episode of Should You Summon for these two recurring Destiny banners. Now, sometimes with recurring banners like this, one of the featured units will change, but both of these banners have already been run as is, so we're in hardcore summary mode. So let's get right into these two Destiny banners, Strategic Masters featuring Clotaire, Lanford, and Rainforce, and Heroes of Destiny featuring Landius, Yulia, and Jugler. These banners run from April 14th to the 27th, and of course, as always, the first SSR you pull from each banner is guaranteed to be one of the three featured heroes that you don't already have. After you pop your guarantee, or if you do already have all three featured heroes, then it's just treated like a normal raid up banner with a 20% off banner rate. Alright, let's roll. We've got Clotaire, who's an AoE focused rush unit. He can disable enemy revive effects. His 3C is either a 3-line AoE that causes fixed damage, or a single target attack that strips 5 buffs and can't be guarded if the victim has one of his talent debuffs. He's a member of Strategic Masters, buffed by Ultimuller and Lanford, and Empire's Honor, buffed by Bernhardt, Leon, Lance, and Rosenseal. He's great in AoE rush teams in PvP, and that's his main use case. He unlocks the attack bond for Rosenseal, and he needs Rosenseal to unlock his attack bond, and Rosenseal to unlock his defensive bond. Speaking of Rosenseal, he is scheduled to come back in June on a Valentine's Day trade-in event banner with her as his partner. So this presents a great way to get Rosenseal if you don't have her already. Next up we have Lanford. He's a physical DPS whose claim to fame is really his talent aura, which boosts all stats by up to 15% for everyone within two spaces. Or three spaces if he has his unique helmet equipped. He's a member of Strategic Masters, buffed by Ultimuller and Lanford, and Yales Legends, buffed by Landius and Sigma. His faction buff for Strategic Masters boosts damage by 15% for mixed type units, He's on faction for Phoenix in the Eternal Temple, and a strong pick against Needhog and Sleipnir in Ancient Beckoning, but only if you don't have Rosalia, since their auras don't stack. If you do have her, the bonus healing and effects provided by her swords give her the edge. He unlocks the attack bond for Wheeler, and the defensive bonds for the Knight of Mystery and Rosenseal. He needs Shelfaniel for his defensive bond, and Landius for his attack bond. Next up we have Rainforce, who's a teleporting, acting again AoE specialist. When he does damage, he gets a stat boost, stackable up to plus 28% to all stats at 6 star. When he tops out at 7 stacks, he acts again, then teleports back to the nearest ally, and all those stacks are wiped, so you can start over. His 3 cost skill piles fixed damage debuffs on enemies, and immediately resets its cooldown if you damage 3 of them, which is probably not too hard with a 3 line AoE. His personal equipment boosts his movement, and lets him move through enemies when he has four or more talent stacks. He's a member of Strategic Masters, buffed by Ultimuller and Lanford, Yales Legends, buffed by Landius and Sigma, and Mythical Realm, buffed by Gizroth and the Sage of the Trees. He's exceptional in the recurring Dimensional Expedition Guild Wars event, one of the marquee characters alongside Shelfaniel and Florentia. He's also a great choice for the Goblin Treasure Mode if you haven't hit Triple S rank for max gold sweeps yet. I don't see him a lot in PvP anymore, even in AoE boxes. Part of the problem is there are a lot more rush-focused AoE threats who basically took over his spot, including him. He unlocks the attack bonds for Virash, Shalinka, and Brenda, and he needs Gizaroth for his defensive bond and Sigma for his attack bond. Moving on to the other banner, we have Landius, who's a tank who can counterattack at 2 range, and his unique weapon reduces incoming damage based on how far away the attacker is. He's a member of Protagonists, buffed by Matthew and Emperor Lovina, and Yales Legends, buffed by Landius and Sigma. His faction buff for Yales Legends gives plus 15% damage dealt if you don't have class advantage over your enemy. He was a core unit of the top scoring teams for Hugin and Munin in Ancient Beckoning, although he's been dropped for more recent, higher scoring strategies. Since he has ranged counter, he's a great core unit for general easy PvE stuff like Time Rifts and Story. On the PvP side, Yales continues to get some interesting new units this season. It's hard for him to compete with Christiane and Hilda, 
And the Chinese servers appear to be moving even further away from including tanks in their core Apex Arena strategies. But then again, we've seen that trend before, and Global still tends to stick with bulky tank push strategies regardless. He unlocks the attack bonds for Lanford, Listel, the Knight of Mystery, and Rachel, and he needs Rachel for his own attack bond. Next up we have Yulia, who's a self-healing, self-reviving magical DPS. She's a member of Legion of Glory, buffed by Lydon, Elwyn, and Grenier, Princess Alliance, buffed by Luna, Shelfaniel, and Christiane, and Mythical Realm, buffed by Gizroth and the Sage of the Trees. In PvE, she was formerly a staple in top-scoring Needhog and Fenrir parties, but she's since been replaced by Christiane and Patsir. Her self-sustain makes her a strong unit for general, easy PvE stuff and some challenges. In PvP, she can be a threatening tank disabler as long as you limit the debuffers on your opponent's side. She can be persistent and hard to get rid of, and she does have access to good supports nowadays. She doesn't unlock anyone's bonds, and she just needs Jessica for her defensive bond and Zerida for her attack bond. Finally, we have Jugler. Jugler is a tank who heals the rest of the team whenever he takes damage. He has a 3C skill that teleports him, does an AoE blast, and locks down adjacent units. His personal equipment lets him ignore skill cost limits, which is basically essential to be able to equip his necessary PvP skills. He's a member of Meteor Strike, buffed by Zerida and Epsilon, Origins of Light, buffed by Dehart, Jugler, and Freya, and Mythical Realm, buffed by Gizaroth and the Sage of the Trees. His faction buff for Origins of Light gives plus 15% damage dealt when you have a higher hit point percentage than your enemy. In PvE, he's still a staple in the high-scoring teams against both Fenrir and Jormungandr, and in PvP, he can either be an anti-AoE option, or he can join an AoE rush team. He unlocks the defensive bond for Sophia and the attack bond for Pierre, and he needs Sophia and Lyphany for his own bonds. So let's skip ahead to the notes for noobs. Clotaire unlocks an important bond for Rosenseal and makes big AoEs in Apex Arena. If you're not running Rosenseal or playing AoE Rush, then you don't really need him. Lanford has a good aura and buffs a dead faction. He's skippable, but if you do somehow end up with him really early in the game, he can be a pretty good PvE booster. Rainforce unlocks Brenda's attack bond, and she's a meta unit for Needhog and Jormungandr. You don't really need her for S ranks, but if you want to scrap with like the top 3 to 5 on your server, then I guess he helps for that. He's also good for goblins until you get SSS and never need to run it again, and Dimensional Expedition every 3 to 6 months, so you probably don't need him. Landius is still a top tank, still useful in both PvE and PvP, so summon him. Yulia is still generally useful throughout PvE and challenges, and fits into the right box in PvP, so I'd say summon her. Finally, Jugler is still useful in Ancient Beckoning and PvP. Oh! Overall, as long as you're still missing one of these three characters, I'd say use your Destiny Summon to pick up your guarantee, then summon again the next time the banner rolls around. No real rush, and no need to go ham trying to get a specific character after you've busted your Destiny guarantee. This banner comes back frequently enough. Finally, just my usual reminder about upcoming banners. So that's the end of this major update cycle, and next week starts the next cycle with the launch of the Iron Chancellor Florentia and the Archon of the Moon Virash, two really good characters. We're also going to get another chance to summon Alpha and Suzette, Illustrial Cherie and Rosalia, Mariel Patzer and Werner Dime, and Ultimuller, Ledin, and Rachel. The third week of the new cycle should also bring us a Build-A-Banner workshop for equipment. You can choose one piece of gear from each slot, and you can reset your choices a couple times. Now, gear banners are usually a whale trap, especially when there are good characters competing for your hard-earned vouchers and crystals, but being able to choose the best of the best pieces of gear makes it a bit more worthwhile. Note that you're not able to choose the newest pieces of gear for it, though. Alright, so that's it for this episode. I'll obviously have much more to say next week, but in the meantime, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next Should You Summon. Extra special thanks, of course, to our Langrisser tier channel members for generously supporting the channel directly. Shout out to Levitt, Derek Gunderson, Kate Soon, Jared Portela, Eden Seal, Jerome Meyer, and Shara Elimerius. Thank you so much for your help, everyone.